Recording, one, two, three, boom. Hi. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know what you wanted me to do. <laughs> you like that little intro? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Something new. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Miss Whitney? We're back. We, we are, are back. back. Yeah. Always consistent, yes. at least, right? Yes. We may not be consistent on the specific day, right. but we are getting better and better. Yes, we are. Yeah, you looking cute today. Thank you. Look you all look summery cute. and Thank like you. floral. And Thanks. I like it. Thanks. Cleaned up real fast, girl. I cleaned up real fast. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, this is Between the Sheets, and I am your host, Leah. And I am, you know, I am that I am. <laughs> I am yes. that I am. Let yes. me just leave it at that for this podcast. There you go. Um, because, you know, labels are a funny thing. Yes, they are. We'll, we'll go into that later. Go ahead and introduce yourself, my co-host. Hi, it's Whitney, W-H-I-T-N-E-Y, period, poos. Welcome back. Welcome Excited back. Excited to chit-chat with you guys. Yes. So the last podcast that we did, um, we we broke it down into two 30-minute sec- yes. uh, sectors. And um, right off the top, it got 91 views, which, which is great. Yeah, really, really good. So we feel like you guys are liking it. Yes. We feel like maybe that's kind of the way to go with this and just kind of break it uh, down into two. So I'm sorry if the last one was kind of an abrupt ending, but we were playing. Right. And, and you right. know, we get to talking and we get to... We, yes, yes. And, and we just kind of lose track of time. So we were a little abrupt on the, the um, ending there, but um, we definitely like and, and think that you guys are going to appreciate the 30-minute sections and, you know, listen when you can. And you guys got to chime in. If you don't like it, you got to chime in and say yes. something about it. give us so. feedback. Please yeah. give us feedback. Yeah. We want to talk about what you guys want to hear. We're so. getting the views. We're not getting the comments. Yes. We need you guys to comment. So Engage we, with us. Yeah. Ask us anything. Like, yes. we, we're open books. Like, we are really open books. Our clients know that. My friends know that. My family knows that. Like, ask me and I will tell you. May not be what you want to hear. Ask and you shall receive. But that's right. You know <laughs> what I mean? But I will give you an answer. So, um, we are kicking off today with uh, double standards. Yes. And um, I want to just dive right into it because we were we were talked about relationships. Right. And, and the correlation with relationships into taking ownership. Right. And from taking ownership into uh, kind of double standards yes. in all of the above and, and not just in relationships. I want people to understand that what we're talking about doesn't always have to do with relationships, no. although... Your life is built on relationships. Yes. That's what we long for in life is relationship with other people, connection. Yes. And so if we want to be healthy in all of these things, then we've got to talk about all the things that make us uncomfortable. Yes, we do. The things that we're good at and the things that we're not so good at. Yes. And so today, uh, Chris was the one that gave us the idea of double standards. Shout out to Chris. Yeah, shout out Chris. In it's the background. Topic. In the background. It's always in the background. So um, what... What is your thinking of what a double standard is? Just like as a whole? As a whole. Uh, I, I believe that a double standard is being so self, I guess there's a little bit of self-righteous like thinking behind it in my opinion, but having an opinion and knowing that opinion is wrong or having an idea and knowing that it's wrong and not moving from that, like not being able to see it from somebody else's point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, or respect somebody else's point of view. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a gist for me. Yeah. So the definition of a double standards is a set of principles that applies differently to one group of people or circumstances. Yes. So something that's like, Hey, we live by this, but it doesn't apply to you. Right. In a relationship, (laughs) I live by this, right. But it doesn't apply to you. Right. In, um, religion. I live by this, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, And I want it to apply to you, you know, but um, I can't make it apply to you. Right. Um, Business, it can be in um, many different areas of our life. So it's basically one set of principle that applies differently to one group of people or circumstances. It also says a code of morals Mm -hmm. that applies more severe standards of sexual behavior to women than the men. 
Oh, I have a topic for you. Yeah? I got into a heated, and I've been being quiet because I want to talk about it on the podcast. Yeah, come on, (laughs) let's go, let's do it. So I was communicating with somebody over the phone this weekend, and I just want to put it out there. I love the LGBTQ community. They were a part of my life for a very long period of time, but I feel like the conversation needs to be had. So it started off with me having a communication with somebody that I had just recently, or I'm starting to get to know. And for me, when I'm dating somebody, it's always, I feel like it's a requirement for me to let these men know that I was with a woman for 10 years. I was married. You know, I feel like that's something you need to share with somebody. I'm just curious why. Because I feel like if they find out after the fact that they're going to also get looking at me and giving me a double standard that just because I was with a woman that. I'm going to continue to look at women. And that has happened to me before on dates. Are you looking at her? Okay, so hold on, hold on. I want to back up before we get into this fully. I want you to make sure that you understand what a double standard is. Now, a double standard would be that the person that you were with was also with somebody in a sexual manner. So if it was a man with a man and then said, you're not right for having a relationship with a woman. Right. But this is what my, it's more nitty gritty than that. So we started having a conversation about that. Things went over well. There was no, you know, judgment that was passed upon me by allowing that to get out. But we started getting on the conversation of a show that you just recently started watching, um, which is called P-Valley. P-Valley in the house? (laughs) It is raunchy, raunchy, raunchy. raunchy. But they bring up some real world stuff. So we got into the conversation. He basically told me that it's okay for him to visually see two women Mm -hmm. be intimate, but it is not okay for him to see two men be intimate. And for me, that is a double standard. That 100% is a double standard. So we got in an argument because I'm like, well, I, he said that he blatantly passed, he, he fast forward through those scenes. <laughs> it made him uncomfortable. And I get it. And I told him, I said, you know, I don't want to sit here and pretend like it's not uncomfortable for me to watch that because that's not what I'm attracted to, right. but that's still a double standard. You can't, Say that it's good for two women because it's appealing to the eye. Yeah. But then say in the same breath that you're supportive of the Mm. LGBTQ community and you can't stand to see two men. I'm going to say that. It pissed me off. And I I don't know if I'm speaking out of context here, but I'm going to say the majority, a good portion of men feel the same way. Yes. And we've had this conversation with a few of them just saying, hey, curious to know, like, you know, and they're like, yeah, seeing two women together. Yeah, that's That's like, that's so great. It's like, okay, well, what about two men? Right. You know what I mean? Or it goes back into like, okay, well, well, um, if you're in a relationship and you want a woman to come into the bedroom, is it okay for me to bring a man? Right. Oh, double standard. Double standard. You know, so yeah. We did. We got in a heated argument. And then my roommate told me from her experience, and I get where she's coming from. She's looking at it as just cut and dry. You know, people usually are okay with watching love scenes with what they're attracted to. Mm. They don't outwardly go out and seek it. So from the outside looking in for somebody who's never been a part of the gay community, but love that show, for instance, you know, it does. It makes you feel extremely uncomfortable. Well, I have to say, um, and, and I love gay men. Yeah. I think everybody that knows me knows that I need a gay best friend. I've been searching out a gay best friend. If you're out there and you and I connect and you're gay, then (laughs) like, I want you to be my BFF because I love gay men. I just, there's just something about them that. Um, the majority of them, some of them are like, some of them are not nice. Oh yeah. Some of them are not nice. They're too mean. Yes. They're like mean girl status for sure. But, um, uh, you know, I've had lesbian friends. I've had, you know, um, there's no neither here nor there for right, me. Right, right. Um, but I will say, and this is me being 100% open, real, raw, and authentic. Right. When I watched that scene as well, two men, I was like, whew. It's like, uncomfortable. Okay, like, wow. You know what I mean? And I was like really taken back by that. And I had to ask myself that as well. Okay, so what about this makes you uncomfortable? Right. Well, first and foremost, I would say that it's a little foreign. You know what I mean? Of we course. are really used to... People think that the gay community makes up this huge ass portion of the United States. And the truth of the matter is, is that it's such a low percentage. Yes. It's such a low percentage that you would be astounded by. Look yeah. it up. Look it up. Yeah. Um, and so I think in the gay community as well, like there, there are people that are 100% flamboyant or free and they don't, they don't care. They go about yes. their business however they want. And there's other people that are still just not as comfortable being in public, maybe because of the ridicule, maybe because the way they get stared right. down or looked at. Um, and so it may not be in front of our eyes as much. Right. And, um, 
a lot of these people also are not seeking out shows that <laughs> right specifically to that but then I got in a conversation with Toya and you'll notice and if you're a Disney fan you'll notice Disney is starting to incorporate certain type of gay lesbian into the Disney movies yeah you know what I mean so it's like she's looking at it from an aspect of it's kind of being shoved in my face, even mm-hmm. though I am not gay. Mm-hmm. I don't have an issue with it, but I also don't want to see so it. So this is one of the um, standards that I kind of wanted to talk about because, um, you know, a double standard can as well be, hey, um, and, and this was kind of in the back of my notes here, but as Christians, okay, being a Christian person, yep. okay, let me just tell you again, there's those hardcore religious Christians, that is not me. Right. <laughs> That's, it's just not. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with saying that 100% because I, I just don't believe that Jesus loved that way. But um, if you do, to, to, right, your, to, each to each own. own. Yeah. But in the context of being a Christian, Christians are expected to celebrate, appreciate, accept mm-hmm. um, all types of ideas that are non-biblical and be okay with it. Right. And yet at the same token, we're supposed to be compliant and stay quiet as God is removed. Those are our beliefs. Yes. Out of the system completely. It's hard. So how is that not a double standard? It is. We want equality. We want to be free. Well, so do we. So if that means that you know, if I'm uncomfortable, if right. I'm an uncomfortable person with this and I have to watch you, well, then you should be uncomfortable if I want to pray Absolutely, inside 100%. of a school. 100%. And if this makes, you know what I mean? So they want to talk about, well, keep God out of school. Well, then where do you draw the line? Right. Where is that? It's a gray line. Right. And so these are all double standards, you know, and I want to talk about hip, hipo- hypocrisy. Yes. Because I believe that that word goes hand in hand with double standards. Yes. And we have all some way, somehow in our own lives been hypocrites. Yes. We have said something that we said we would never do and we did it. Yep. We have acted out or in a way, in a circumstance, in a situation that we never thought that we would have. And we did. Mm -hmm. We said, I would never. And we did. And so we've all been hypocrites in our life at some point. Yes. Would you agree? Absolutely. 100%. Um, And so we have all lived in our life with some form of double standard. Yes. We're all guilty. But it's time that we start talking about them and identifying them to really determine, okay, well, how is this affecting my relationships with my friends, my spouse, my my business, you know, with my ideas and views culturally, Mm -hmm. religion-wise, out in this environment, you know, that we live in, that the world. Yes. Um, so I want to ask you a question that, you know, now we're just, we're just going to stay heated here and mind you, we are going to cut in, in 30 minutes. We're going to cut down and we're going to take this to another yeah. part too. Again, we're kind of break it down like that. So give us your comments. Let us know if you like that. Let us know. Um, Brittany Griner. Okay. Do you know who she is? I no. Okay. You do know who she is. You're just not recognizing the name. So she is the WB, um, the, the women's basketball. Uh, oh yeah. WNBA. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. one that's going uh-huh. through all the crap right now with marijuana and being out over th- overseas. Yes. Yes. And, um, she is in Russia. She got, uh, I believe that she got, uh, admitted to that prison in February, mm-hmm. I believe of this year. And she's Beginning still there. The year, she's yeah. going through trial right now. And it's a big talk because, you know, she's been writing and, and I don't know if it's actually her been writing or somebody's been writing on her behalf. I believe that she did write something right. um, to, you know, get her removed. And, and, and of course, there was another uh, person that we had removed. Um, and I can't remember that the individual's name that was removed uh, this year as well. And they thought they were going to release them both, but they didn't. So I wanted to ask you because I, I don't know if you knew this or not, but Brittany Griner was also one that said that she didn't want to stand for the national anthem. Oh, oh, this is a great topic. Yeah. <laughs> and I um, feel very strongly about this. I've had specific encounters where I've gotten almost kicked out of the Pepsi Center because of it. So mind you, she did it because of George Floyd, right. because of um, her stance and her belief on mm-hmm. George Floyd and the justice system. And she did make a comment. I'm going to make that very clear that she made a comment that it was in no way, shape or form as a disrespect to her country or, Correct. you know what I mean? But she said she still loves her, her country. Her dad, I believe, was in the Vietnam War. Um How do you feel about that? Um, I feel like she is allowed to do so. Yeah. There's a bunch of different ways to look at it. But when that 
was originally written, it was not intended for black people to even be included in it. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole point and purpose to stop doing it in the first place, along with Colin Kaepernick and all these other people that have kind of started this movement against it. Um, I agree with her. I think she she's exercising her right as an American. And if she is choosing not to want to stand for that, I'm, I'm not going to be mad at her. Um, my ex served over 20 years in the military and was treated like trash towards the end. Mm -hmm. And any place that we went to sporting events, she refuses to stand Yeah, because the government didn't take care of her. So what, so, so you feel that, um, her not standing for the national anthem is her stance and saying, um, you don't support me or us yes. as individuals and 100%. therefore I'm not going to. In the to... African American community, exactly. And I'm not going to be a sheep, a follower. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like that's what, and people get so offended right off the bat by, I can't, it happened to us at the Pepsi, I can't believe you're not standing up. That's so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've served in the military. Have you? Mm -hmm. There's always a, a justified reason behind it. But I mean, that's something that our kids don't get taught in school is that, nas that national anthem was not made for black people. It just wasn't. And where do you get your, your, your basis of that? So that is just based off of facts. I mean, I can pull stuff up, but I mean, that's what I was taught from my African-American heritage, that that was written for white authority. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do. I mean, it was, I believe, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but it was written around or prior to slavery and segregation and all of that, mm -hmm. where they weren't even allowed to stand during that. Mm -hmm. So, um... I guess my question would be now that she is in a foreign country. Yes. And she didn't want to stand up for mm -hmm. her own country yep. and, and, you know, and, and wants yep. the help and the backing of the country now. Should we then back her? I think yes, because she's exercising her right as an American. We have set laws into place that allow people to do as they wish. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's that deep. Yeah. I think that why she's in prison is a little aggressive with mm -hmm. the fact that she has a doctor's note. Now, granted, you also need to be smart and realize you're traveling to a country where those laws are not seen the same way not they are at in all. America. As well as being lesbian. Exactly. As well. So on top of it, I mean, I, I can only imagine what she's going through. I would, <sighs> first of all, she I can't skinny, make it. skinny, skinny, skinny as I hell. I would not make it in prison or in jail. But now she's actually overseas too, where they don't give a shit whether she's American or not. Yeah. Um, so I was asking this because I, I saw a meme that went up and now people are really starting to get mm -hmm. flared up and start talking and saying, okay, well, you didn't want to respect the anthem and you didn't want to stand up. And so now you want our country to fight for you. But why, when you don't want to support us, should we support you? That pisses me off because it's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing to, for her to be able to exercise her right. So are we going to start telling all these foreigners that are over here that are not standing up for it, but are abiding by these rules? Are we going to tell them, say something to them? About... Not standing for the national anthem. You're in our country. Yeah. You're here. You're mm -hmm. taking full advantage of the the freedom of, if you want to call it freedom, being an American. Yeah. Are you going to abide by our rules? Yeah. Well, I would love to look this up. I would love to look up the information that you said. Yes. You know, because um, Abraham Lincoln was the first, I think, president to really want to kill the, um, you know, when we talk about being, you know, um, the, the Civil War, you know, wanting to push against it. And from my understanding was that the Declaration of Rights and things of that nature were signed in after that was done. And so right. I'm curious to know, um, you know, your thoughts, your 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 wisdom. And if you guys have the wisdom and all, yes. school us. School, school us. us. Because Check us. these are all opinions right now. These are all just, you know, I'm, I'm curious to know what's the feedback on everybody's opinion. You know, um, first and foremost, she was caught with um, cannabis oil. Right, a cartridge. So yeah. it was cannabis oil. Now, mind you, dumb, dumb, dumb decision. Yeah. I'm yes. sorry, but you're going to go into Russia. That country is no joke. No joke. And do something like that. Well, foolishly, where the hell was your thoughts at? Like, I'm sorry, but um, that's just dumb. Yeah. And, um, but the way that they treat their prisoners, um, they're, they're, conduct within the prison is not anything like our prison right. standards here and ours are not even that high no. <laughs> mind you um and I think it is really like wow like you know that we aren't trying to pull her a lot faster I mean February and we're already yeah. going to the end of the year and her next um I think her her her, her last trial was July 14th so well, she she admitted guilt yeah, and that's what um, I was without just about intent to say. though yes 
Yes. And uh, so I, I was just curious. I wanted to know kind of what, what that's the heat good, on was that. That's a good double standard. Yeah. That's a great double standard because it ruffles feathers in, oh, in all yeah. areas. Oh, it's going to get people talking. I mean, mm-hmm. I, th- I think in general, um, neither here nor there. What, you know, what's your stance on it? So um, that was one thing that I wanted to, to ask you about. But how about women versus men in pay? Oh, my gosh. That's I don't think that's ever going to change. Yeah. I think that's something that is going to continue to happen because it's the world we live in. Well, it's changing now. And, you know, what's happening around the world, especially with um, the women's um, uh, soccer. Yes. Is they are, they are pushing, they are fighting, and they have been on this fight for quite some time. And something just got passed. Um, where they were like, no, you know, we want to get paid just as much. And right. if not more, because our section is watched more higher yes. than even the men's section yes. and they're still getting paid less. But, um, also, you know, Jennifer Lopez was one that changed the game in acting yes. for women who, um, started to receive more money for right. her positions. Right. Um, I'm, I'm a believer of the opposite ways that you get what you ask for. 100%. And if you demand respect, then you get respect. 100%. And so we need to start stepping up and asking for these things like we're doing for right. rights. You know, if we're not getting it, I'm, I'd be damned if I'd sat back and known that, Hey, so-and-so has the same experience as me. Um, you know, it, maybe I'm better. Maybe he's, you know, better in some form, but show me why Right. they're getting paid more. More. You know, um, and we're prettier to look at. Prettier to look at. (laughs) I think another good conversation to bring that up, and we touched on it a little bit, was was the Monique situation and her being so pissed off for Netflix underpaying her. And why are these other comedians that are males getting paid more than she is? And Mm -hmm. she cut up bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and her and Steve Harvey got into it a little Mm -hmm. bit um, kind of behind the scenes as well because uh, she, I think she had some, uh, maybe it was not, was it Steve Harvey? Well, I think it was maybe Steve Harvey and Tyler Perry. Um, well, and she's going through it with D.L. Hughley now, too. Yeah. Bad. Mm. Bad. Not good. But that's a double standard thing. Um, but when you put her, so take gender out of it. Mm-hmm. Let's just take, you know, career-wise. Right. If we hold those to a standard, I can't sit here and say that Monique should be getting paid more than Dave Chappelle. Mm. Eh. Yeah. Well, and you know, I and really I think, know. I, and I agree with you hundred percent is what you bring to the table. Right. I'm sorry, but what do you bring to the table? So on the opposite spectrum, I agree with, with you 100%. It's like, I don't get paid just as much as you do because I'm a woman. Right. It's because of the skills that I bring yes. to the table. And if I have the same match skills that I'm bringing to the table, why am I not getting the same pay? Exactly. Now, if I'm not, and I'm just, Hey, I'm a woman. So I need to get paid more. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's no, that's yeah, not enough. That would be a crazy double standard. It would be like, okay, well, anybody that's a makeup artist, whether you're good or bad, gets the same amount as you. No. You know what I mean? No, no, no. That's not how it works. Right. You take education, you take courses, you, you know, how much are you putting into yourself? Exactly. So, um, yeah, I wanted to kind of know if you believed, um, you know, that, that that's changing or whatnot. And um, if you guys have any stories on, you know, men versus women or pay or something that you've been involved in, let us know as well because- Um, the game is changing and I'm glad to see that, but we are also, you know, on this, um, other kick of, uh, do you think a woman should be the president? As much as I, oh, I feel a certain <laughs> partial way about this. As much as I think it would be wonderful for our country and the benefits that could come from it and all of these things. Yes. But I also feel like it's extremely dangerous. I feel like they're not going to take her serious. Uh, there's just, there's so many other laws against women in other countries yeah. that it just, I don't see how it's going to work long term. And, you know, that's a hard one for me too, because you just think, okay, again, let's talk about this standard. Right. Woman, let's just put her in a position because right. we want a woman. Right. But does she have the skills and the qualifications? And, and, you know, I mean, and I'm sure that there are, I'm sure that there are plenty oh, yeah. out there that are, but let's also take it statistically to, okay, first and foremost, who is the majority of murderers out there? Mm-hmm. Men versus women. Men. Yes. Um, violent crimes, men. Now, I'm not saying that women don't do them. Of course, right. we know that there are, right. some, there are some crazy ass women that do. But the majority are men, which also tells me that women have a soft spot. That yes. they're maybe not as willing to be as risky. Cutthroat. Or cutthroat or make decisions. And they may make them a little bit more emotionally based than rationally. Right. As far as, you know, okay, maybe, maybe it's not, and, and that worries me for our country as well. Right. Can a woman take a position 
where she doesn't have that softness, which we were right. built for, guys. Yeah. I'm just going to take that back biblically really quick. You know, man and women were built differently. We have different chests, right? Right. And I believe 100% that God made us with breasts so that when the man pressed his chest against us, there was a soft softness. spot. Yes. And that's a course. That's my belief. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm just putting it out there, but... You know, we do have some softness yes. about us. And again, there's there's probably some hard ass women that will kick some dudes' ass out right. there. I, I know that no they problem. exist. You know, some GI Jane stuff. Right, right. <laughs> so Well, and um, I, that's another thing, the double standard is I feel like I I've always felt this way that if you've not served in the military, mm. I really don't think you should be running the country. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that really quick. Let's talk about military. Yeah. Women's rights in military. Yes. And Which some that's possible changing. double standards right there as well, because women wanted the full rights to be in the military. They wanted mm-hmm. the full rights to um, play ball and play with individuals and even in it's fighting, you know. So do we allow for women to be in a UFC fight with a man? No. Why? I have absolutely no idea. If they want the same rights, they should be fighting They should be able to do what they want. So supposedly, and and again, fact check me because I'm not exactly sure if this is true and I'm saying that wholeheartedly. We want you guys to school us if you know more than us. Um, When they started talking about these women rights within the military, they said, okay, so the first daughters that are 17 and 18 years old are going to war as well as the the males. And everybody got in an uproar about it. We're going to send our women. Yeah, yeah. Well, is that not what we fought for? Yeah. Was those same rights? So is it going to be biased then when it's time to go to war that yeah. we don't want to go because we're women? Yeah. It's, it's, that's a double C. <laughs> <laughs> These are hard conversations, they but they're very true hard. conversations is, you know, we have got to be willing to say if we want these, you know, we want all across the board, we yeah. want this one. We need to be able to also say all across the board, we're going to fight. We're going to do exactly what these individuals are doing. That reminds me of a conversation and an argument I got in with somebody a while back, but I don't know if you've seen all the stuff about these transgender people that are in the Olympics mm-hmm. and should they be competing with men or women yeah. because their their physical makeup is different. Right. So if you're a man that and is, you've transitioned to a I'm woman. I'm sorry, but and that is hard. an actual, it's, like, <laughs> It's fact. hard because you look at the stats, right? You look at the facts, how tall they are, depending on what sport they're playing, is that's not fair. Yeah. Now, can a woman build herself up to be, you know what I mean, just as strong as a man or, or gain muscle mass and things of that nature and, um, you know, more testosterone and there's pills mm-hmm. for this and pills for that nowadays, but it's a really good topic of conversation. Yeah. I actually was just watching a show about the individual who ran and he was transgender, the, um, the swim, the, yes. um, and it was a really heated, you know, because they, they, well, of course he's going to win because he was a male and he was put into a female division and you know, that's, that's a really hard, difficult thing but they're fighting for those say. rights. So you got to be able to face the music if that's what you want to be included in. Right. I mean, and the people that are fighting as well with those individuals need to be able to take a loss. Yes. <laughs> if you know, they come in there and they win against your ass, like you don't get to have that double yeah. standard. I mean, where do you draw the line? Yeah. That is a good question that I think I want people to really start to um, ask themselves because God asked me straight up and really questioned me straight up where I draw the line on specific ideas and thoughts and um, things that were almost the paradigm built into me, you know, Um, and having a conversation with God when he said, look, where do you draw the line? And point blank, I was like, whoa, like, I don't know how to answer this question, God, you know, and it was as simple as, And I'm just going to say it when, uh, God was having a conversation with me. He said, you know, how do you see me? I've told you this story, yes, but, um, I think it's really important because it really makes you think about your own personal biases. And I said, well, I see you just the way that I, you know, the the pictures that I see Jesus and and, and, and at least what's even been, you know, said biblically, you know, tall, dark, long hair, um, white cloak. Right. That's the way that I see you. Sandals. And sandals, you know. <laughs> nice big smile. Right. I don't know. Welcome me with hands. Right. Hey, come chill with me. <laughs> um, and he says, and if your black brother and sister sees me as black, are they wrong? 
Yeah. And I said, no. I mean, that's been a discussion for years. You go into an old school grandma's house and you see that black Jesus on the wall. And Trent talked about black that's Santa. That's not what, that's not how I was raised. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, that's not the Jesus that I seen, but you're right. That doesn't make it wrong. So I said, no. And he said, why? And I said, because that's the way they see you. That's just, that's in there. And he said, so where do you draw the line? Whew. It's hard. What do you mean, God? What right. do you mean, where do I draw the line? Where do you draw the line in seeing how somebody sees me? Because you're the all-knowing. Ooh, because you know. Yeah. Because you know exactly what I look like and you understand my mind fully and completely. That you could tell somebody that I wasn't a donkey. Right. That I wasn't a burning bush. Yeah. <laughs> Who the hell am I? Let me Who just the hell am I? And that's kind of how I felt was like, God wow, like, what are, what are you teaching me here? What, you know, and, and, and at this point it's like, okay, yeah, I, that's not mine to judge. Like, right. it's not at that point. It's like, God, you, I'm sorry. You schooled me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, let me take, my own let biases. Me get out of this seat. Cause this is not my seat to be sitting in. Yeah. It was very <laughs> uncomfortable. So, um, we're already 30 minutes in. And I so, have questions. I yes. have questions. I know you brought up just now that, you know, you were questioned, but I have some questions. Oh, for, dang. Okay. Okay. For Ms. Okay. Leah. So, um, my first one, and I'm going to try to explain these as best as I can. Cause I, I, when I take notes, I take them real funky. It makes sense to me. Um, I want to know what was the hardest double standard you struggled with that pertains to religion? Mm. Uh, probably. And I think I know which one you're talking about, but I mean like judgment versus non-judgment. Like, and it can pertain in all aspects. It can be about homosexuality. It can be about marriage. It can be about your children. But what would you say is the hardest one that you were like, man, mm. I need to check myself. Yeah. I think it was just that. Exactly what, what just I described. just said. And, 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 and I'll say that because it comes in so many different, um, so many different versions is that, you know, Growing up in the, in a, you know, and when I say growing up, it was Catholic, but Catholics believe a lot of what Christians believe, but they, they have more religion based than what Christian does. Christians more relationship based, um, getting to know Jesus and actually knowing the word right. as opposed to just getting up and reading what was told to you. Um, I think all the way across the board, this last two years have been a journey of me discovering so many double standards yeah. of what. I believe as a person um, is 100% completely right as opposed to somebody living across the country and growing up and, and seeing Jesus or seeing God as somebody that doesn't look like my Jesus. Right. And that is a really, really hard conversation to have with any Christian based yes. person. And at the end of the day, the only thing that I can say about that is that I don't want to be the judge. Right. Right. And so what I see as Jesus is what I see. And I believe that when I leave here, that I am going to meet Jesus, that I am going to see him. Um, Now, if Sally from down the street sees a donkey and that's Jesus to her. She's still believing in something. She's still putting effort into. I'm not 100% without a doubt saying you're going to hell. Right. I don't want that position. I don't want that judgment. Um, and then I do believe um, a lot of us Christians have got so many things wrong in the word um, yes. with rules and regulations. And yes. um, that is a huge no-no for me because I just believe that. Uh, and not only believe, but contextually it says, Jesus said, look, if you think that you can live by these rules and regulations, like they were there to show us that we were right. all sinners. And if you think that you can abide by them, then you better abide, abide by them all, yep. not just one. Because there's a lot of double standards in there that this this piece of word works for me good, right. but this one doesn't. Right. This one suits my life right now, but this one feels ugly, so it doesn't apply to me. Right. I'm going to take this version and say, yep, this is great, but this one is no good for me. And that's where my judgment came in, because I'm going to tell you what, I knowing when I was raised, my mom was already a born-again Christian. But she was raised with the Catholic Church, and that was one of my kind of back and forth struggles with faith, just in general. And I'm like, why do you have to take confession when God says He already knew knew what you were going to do before you even did it? Mm-hmm. Why do I have to go into a booth and confide yeah. in somebody, whether they're a person of power or not? Like, why? Yeah, yeah. Well, and so many of those people of power have <laughs> really double standards, you know, like, took advantage what? of people in the church as well that, yeah. you know, uh, these, these people in, in, in positions, um, 
So yeah, that, that, that's, that's kind of what it would be. My next one. What is the biggest current double standard that you're experiencing within your family household right now? Mm. Um, (laughs) you know, we, I had this written down and I think this will be part of the topic that we get into in the second part. So I think that I want to answer that on part two, just because of the fact that, um, double standards in relationships are very alive and well, (laughs) (laughs) and we need to start recognizing those within ourselves first. Because that could be a double standard right there yeah. is saying, well, you do this and you do this and you do this, but not uh-huh. recognizing what we do or that we might be doing the same thing. Yep. But it just doesn't feel good to me. So right. now I'm going to call you out on it. Right. And that's a double standard. I'm sorry, yes, but it, it is. is. You know, you got to be able to eat shit sometimes yes. and say, okay, <laughs> yeah, I messed up, Matt, you know? So uh, I, we will get into that on the second part. Okay. Um, my next one would be, what double standards exist in your business? Um, and going back to a specific scenario that you talked to me about with what I, I just love this topic because I feel like it justifies what your business means, why you do what you do. And when you explained it to me, I feel like you had a little bit of conviction in it about that man that judged you for taking boudoir photography Mm. and said that you were, what did he call it specifically? You were being a burden to Mm -hmm. men, to all men. Mm -hmm. Um, he was Christian, correct? Mm-hmm. So he had an opinion about what you were doing. Right. But I want you to talk about that because I know you said you struggled with it. And then like, is it a double standard for genuine Christians that read the Bible in the word? Are they wrong for looking at the situation and saying, you know, you're, you're taking it too far. Yeah. Um, I think that everybody's going to have opinion because they're just like assholes. And, <laughs> exactly. Um, I feel like the more and more that I've dealt with people's opinions of who they think that I am or my intention in my business, um, you know, I, I have learned to like water off a duck's back, just kind of let it roll off. Yeah. Then absolutely. Um, it was, um, I wouldn't say necessarily a double standard, but he was calling me out on my, um, you know, being a Christian right. and putting out images of right. women that are sexy right? and saying, how are you going to put this stuff out when you call yourself a Christian? And so he could have been calling that a hypocrisy for me right. or a double standard. And, um, it did check me because my intention in my heart was not, Oh, let me create pornography and let me create right. you know, visual pictures that entice men to cheat on their wives and to go in a dark room. And, um, but I also had to understand that that man needed to take ownership too and understand mm-hmm. that if that's what you're looking at and that's the form of, um, visuals that you're getting and you're receiving something from that, that is contrary to what my intention was. Well, then that's right. a you thing and not a me thing. Right. Um, you know, so many Christians think that it's not okay to be sexy and I have to dress a certain way and I have to wear long dresses and long hair and not wear makeup and not say a cuss word and not have tattoos. And that is the religion based principle, um, of, well, just that, that is, that is the principle of religion. It's, it's, I'm I'm saying it, it, it in a different form, but that is the principle of religion is I have to follow all these rules and regulations mm-hmm. um, in order for God to accept me. When God said, this is a free gift, girlfriend. Right. Like, I love you right. no matter what. And yeah, I want you to strive to be better and do better and, 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 and whatnot. And, and I want to help change your heart. But no matter what, like, I got you. I'm right. never going to leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise. It can't be voided out. Right. I don't believe that God can change his mind. There are many Christians that do believe yeah. that you can lose your salvation. I'm sorry. That means that God made a mistake. Right. So you get to be the one in charge of your salvation. God said, no, this is a gift and it's free to you. Right. Um, so that, that's a, that's a really hard <laughs> conversation, it is. um, that will have people, you know, ruffled and, and their, their, you know, that their beliefs and, and whatnot. And, and Hey, again, to each his own, if that's the way you believe and that's the way you live, then great live that right. way. Um, I'm not going to push it on you the way that I believe if, if we're having a conversation and I feel like you don't have the same beliefs then we're probably not going to get along too well anyways. Right. I mean, I'm just being right. honest, um, because I'm not a judgmental person and I'm not going to live by these rules and regulations that you think are going to get you saved. Um, because I already know that I can't fit that right. box. I can't fit in that box. I already know that I'm right. a sinner. I already know that I've been saved nothing but merely by grace. Right. And, um, 
we're going to probably not have the best relationship, yeah. you know, yeah. which is, which is fine, but it doesn't mean that, you know, I hate you or I'm going to talk ugly about you. It's just not the way that I believe. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm a different kind of Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, and that's why I loved like people that have experienced your business came in and taken these boudoir photography photos and videos. Um, it's so much more than just a picture. Mm-hmm. It's so much more than just getting your husband something that you feel like is going to help him, yeah. you know, be enticed by you or right. sexual with you again or whatever the case. And at the end of the day, guys, God gave us free will. He gave us all free will to do as we wish. Um, and what we do with that is up to us. And so the word says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling in your heart, meaning that make mm-hmm. your own decisions, but make it very cautiously right. because those are your decisions. We're all going to be accountable at, at some point or another, whether it's to God, whether it's to Jesus, whether it's to a higher self, whether right. it's that we get into the end of the journey and it's like, okay, well, time to go back again. Like right. there's so many things that are unanswered that, you know, I, I just, I really, really believe in my heart of hearts that we're going to be very surprised when yes. we meet that time. Yes. You know, I, I really do. So hold on, pause there. Okay, we're going to stop positive. there guys, um, because we are a good 40 minutes in and we want to start part two yes. of this podcast where I'm going to answer more of Whitney's questions. <laughs> These tough questions. Holy, she's already got me like sweating here. Yes. I told her, come with it. I said, you know, ask me whatever you want. Um, but these are, these are tough, but these are good questions. Yes. And, um, you know, I have to be okay with my stances and my of beliefs course. and who I am at the end of the day. And so, um, I, I'm happy to answer them. So we're going to get into part two of double standards. Oh, um, and we will be right back with that. You guys, it'll only be like a week before you guys right. see it, but we'll be back. We're going to be in the same clothes. So don't judge. Yep. Don't <laughs> judge. Cause this is just, we're going to go right into it. We're going to keep talking. Yes. So we'll be back. Um, part two, you guys like share, subscribe, give us yes. your thoughts. Yes. Love you. Bye. Love you. What? 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 Between the sheets? What? 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 Between the sheets? What? 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 Between the sheets? Yeah. <laughs> All right.